it's been a wild ride for the crude oil and energy sector of late. So to take us through it all for traders is Pete McGuire from XM. He joins us now live. Pete, love having you on the trade as always. So if you're a trader sitting down at your screen this Monday morning after everything that's happened at the weekend, what we've seen on Friday, oil pushing to those new highs, how do you approach it? Yeah. Hi, Cara. Well, I tell you what, what we've seen in the last couple of hours, how do you approach it? I think you need two hands on the wheel and don't take your eyes off the screen. You've seen a $10 move to the upside since, you know, three or four hours ago, or maybe four hours ago. Uh, gold's up 45, 50 bucks. US dollar index boom to the upside. So all this fee premium is really creating, I think, opportunity. Big sell off across Asia. Japan's down three odd percent. A lot of those Asian markets, Hong Kong smacked down three and a half percent. So how do you how do you manage it? I think you've just got to be really focused, and you've got to look at you know what your entry points are, what your exit points are, and be conscious that big swings create opportunities, but also uh, yeah, don't get too brave. So do you go do you leverage up during this time or leverage down usually? Well, it depends on what the instrument you're trading. I mean. You know, if you're trading options and you're trading futures or you're doing, you know, an assortment of different derivatives, the that just depends on what your, I think, risk tolerance is and how much capacity you've got as far as, you know, firepower. In other words, how much have you got in the bank? So you need to manage those expectations. You need to also consider that uh, you've got gapping and you could talk all day on that slippage. Uh, as far as you think you've got a stop loss locked in and it just goes spanks straight through it. So there's no guarantees when you're trading these sort of this extreme volatility car and traders have got to be, I think, um, mindful that there are many moving parts playing here. You've got geopolitical concerns with Ukraine and Russia. You've got demand um, issues. If you put sanctions on Russia and 12 million barrels a day, You've got uh, equity market sell-offs. You've got the US dollar index boom to the upside, 98, now we're at 99.05, and, and probably take 100 out this week. But, so I think that there's just so much bandwidth, and that's the excitement. I'm excited by it, and traders, as long as you use a, a sharp head, you, you know, you should do quite well out of it, because there's movement. So talking of slippage, of course, gapping happens when markets are closed. So in this environment, how much risk do you take into those periods like the weekend? Do you tend to scale back positions or are you happy to sit on them? Well, I think if you will, <laughs> this is where very smart people, it's like holding real estate, you know, and you, you held it in a rising market. It makes a, a deal look like a Nobel laureate and makes a Nobel laureate that if it goes the other way, look like a deal. If you would have held long crude the other day, say on Thursday, and you wake up today and you go, wow, what's happened? Um, you know, you've just bought yourself a probably a very nice home. Um, you could go the other way and you could have been short and you didn't get out of the market and now you've lost a home. So there's the that's the true, I think, the, the conditions of these markets. I don't like holding positions over weekends. I think it's a very, very risky um, scenario. So, yeah, you've got to be very, very, you know, cool head with this and uh, use a lot of knowledge. You can get a lot of knowledge from education sources and really just, you know, a level head at these times. Car is advisable. At what point do you call it on a trade, Pete? You know, you've admitted that you were wrong in terms of direction. At what point do you, do you say, right, I'm getting out of the trade? Well... You've got to know if you're in a futures contract, I'll knock you out if you haven't got any money in the account. So your, your margin, if you're in an option, um, again, you could be naked a futures position if you're selling options. Um, if you're buying, uh, you know, you've, you've got the premium there, then, you know, you know that you're limited downside. Depends on the instrument, depends on how your, um, how your, oh, that's, that's, that's so difficult, Car. I mean, everyone's got a different risk tolerance. Everyone's got a different understanding. I think you've just got to be really level-headed and don't think that things will bounce. You know, you've, you've just if, you, if you've made the wrong decision, then get the hell out of there. And that's what your technicals have got to do. And in these times, these are extremely volatile periods. It's not a, oh, I don't think I've ever seen a $10 move in three hours on gold, a uh, oh, part of me on crude, 45 on gold in a matter of an hour or two. 
they're unusual times. These are very, very unusual. So if, you, if you're long crude at the moment, I know it's one of your favorite markets to look at. If you're long crude and you're loving your trade, is it the right time now to take some profits, do you think, trim back on, on some of those positions? It could be, but it, look, I, I've just been talking to international people in the last half hour and you've got some of the guys are saying 185s where you'll see crude. Many are saying a 150 handle. These are international banks. So, you know, I've, I've seen guys call it, and women, you know, analysts saying, oh, get out, you know. Or, oh, I could tell you about 2008, you know, I, I, I've got many analysts that told me, get out at 105, and it went to 148. So, you know, you, you've got to be very, you, you, you've got to be watching it minute to minute. And you know, I think you've got to recalibrate your lens that you're looking through, because yesterday's news is, is gone, and four hour ago news is gone, it's what's happened in the last couple of minutes gives you a clear indication of what's expected, at, you know, as far as sanctions and all of those factors rolling in together. I hope I've answered it well enough, but I think it's a lens that needs to be constantly readjusted. So if you do like a bit of risk in your portfolio and you like the volatility, do you have a bit of a hedge in there as well? And if so, what would you be using? I think you've got to have a hedge, certainly. Maybe US dollar index has got to be, so currencies are a hedge. I think you've got to look at if you if you think crude's going to capitulate from here, then maybe you've got to have some call. Uh, part of me some puts there at you know 110. I don't know, maybe 105. If you think it's going to capitulate, but I don't necessarily think, and I'm not here to give you you know personal advice. But at the moment, it seems to be very long, very bullish. Um, so you've got to just look at what instruments you can use from a hedge perspective. And that's an art in itself, uh, depending upon what instruments you prepare to hedge yourself with. Are you watching crypto at the moment, Pete? No, a little bit. Volatile. I mean, outside kind of trading normal fiat currencies, zero Aussie has been a really aggressive move. Where would you prefer to kind of gain some traction in, in the fiats or in, uh, in the digital space at the moment? I'm looking at digital. I mean, digital is wonderful because you just see those big swings and roundabouts. Um, so, yeah, I, I certainly keep an eye on that. You, it never fails to disappoint. Have a look at gold, and that's give, giving you an indication as far as where we are with currencies. So there's m plenty of fear out there. So, yeah, look at your fiat currencies, look at your naturally your crypto, and take it all together and um, try and appreciate all of those components that make up the... Um, I suppose, the landscape at the moment. Pete, I know um, you love talking to other traders. You said you were just chatting to a few international players. How important is it yeah. to stay in touch with other traders during this time, during these volatile periods when anything can happen, mm -hmm. keeping on top of news, but also not isolating yourself when you're trading? Yeah, I think there's platforms out there, Cara, and when I say that, chat rooms and many traders congregate and have a wonderful cohort, a, a great brotherhood, sisterhood um, network that they exchange information on, live chatting and discussing. You know, you, you, you sort out the wood from the chaff, the people that you trust and those people, you know, the, the, you, you trust their viewpoints. They're living in different parts of the world. They've got different things they bring to the argument. So I think it's very important if you're going to trade international markets to be trading with people that are internationally focused. You know, say so you're talking to someone in your chat room and they might be in Cape Town, another guy, someone else in, you know, Sao Paulo in Brazil, someone in, in Morocco. But that's what a global network allows you. And you really take on board, I think, all of those different perspectives because if different traders have different perspectives. They look at the fundamentals in a different lens. They look at their technicals and they have, you know, a lot of them are very, very clued in people that have spent hundreds if not thousands or tens of thousands of hours analyzing and they're they're technical analysts they're just you know that these people would be you know a big success at any hedge fund but they've chosen to go alone and they're uh, yeah they're they're champions some of these traders